I come here from Jerusalem to speak on behalf of my people, the people of Israel. I've come here to expose the brazen lies spoken from this very podium against my country and against the brave soldiers who defend it. So when it comes to their ultimate goals, Hamas is ISIS and ISIS is Hamas. Iran's uh, President Rouhani stood here last week and shed uh, crocodile tears over what he called the globalization of terrorism. Maybe he should uh, spare us those phony tears and have a word instead with the commanders of Iran's Revolutionary Guards. He could ask them to call off Iran's global terror campaign, which has included attacks in two dozen countries on five continents since 2011 alone. This is um, this bemoaning by the Iranian president of the spread of terrorism has got to be one of history's greatest displays of double talk. Ladies and gentlemen, would you let ISIS enrich uranium? Would you let ISIS build a heavy water reactor? Would you let ISIS develop intercontinental ballistic missiles? Of course you wouldn't. Then you mustn't let the Islamic State of Iran do those things either. Because here's what will happen. Once Iran produces atomic bombs, all the charms and all the smiles will suddenly disappear. They'll just vanish. And it's then that the Ayatollahs will show their true face and unleash their aggressive fanaticism on the entire world. There's only one responsible course of action to address this threat. Iran's nuclear military capabilities must be fully dismantled. Make no mistake, ISIS must be defeated. But to defeat ISIS and leave Iran as a threshold nuclear power is to win the battle and lose the war. For 50 days this past summer, Hamas fired thousands of rockets at Israel, many of them supplied by Iran. I want you to think about what your countries would do if thousands of rockets were fired at your cities. No other country and no other army in history have gone to greater lengths to avoid casualties among the civilian population of their enemies. Israel's soldiers deserve not condemnation, but admiration, admiration from decent people everywhere. Let me show you a photograph. It was taken by a, a France 24 crew during the recent conflict. It shows two Hamas rocket launchers, which were used to attack us. You see three children playing next to them. Hamas deliberately put its rockets in hundreds of residential areas like this, hundreds of them. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a war crime. And I say to President Abbas, these are the crimes, the war crimes, committed by your Hamas partners in the national unity government which you head and you are responsible for. And these are the real war crimes you should have investigated or spoken out against from this podium last week. Ladies and gentlemen, as uh, Israel's children huddle in bomb shelters and Israel's Iron Dome missile defense knocked Hamas rockets out of the sky, the profound moral difference between Israel and Hamas couldn't have been clearer. 
Israel was using its missiles to protect its children. Hamas was using its children to protect its missiles. <laughs> By investigating Israel rather than Hamas for war crimes, the UN Human Rights Council has betrayed its noble mission to protect the innocent. In fact, what it's doing is to, to turn the laws of war upside down. Israel, which took unprecedented steps to minimize civilian casualties, Israel is condemned. Hamas, which both targeted and hid behind civilians, that's a double war crime, Hamas is given a pass. The Human Rights Council is thus sending a clear message to terrorists everywhere. Use civilians as a human shield. Use them again and again and again. And you know why? Because sadly, it works. By granting international legitimacy to the use of human shields, the, U the UN Human Rights Council has thus become a terrorist rights council. And it will have repercussions. It probably already has. About the use of civilians as human shields. Today, the Jewish state is demonized with the apartheid libel and charges of genocide. Genocide. In what moral universe does genocide include warning the enemy's civilian population to get out of harm's way, or ensuring that they receive tons, tons of humanitarian aid each day, even as thousands of rockets are being fired at us, or setting up a field hospital to aid their wounded? Well, I suppose it's the same moral universe where a man who wrote a dissertation of lies about the Holocaust and who insists on a Palestine free of Jews, Judenrein, can stand at this podium and shamelessly accuse Israel of genocide and ethnic cleansing. In the past, outrageous lies against the Jews were the precursors to the wholesale slaughter of our people. But no more. Today, we, the Jewish people, have the power to defend ourselves. We will defend ourselves against our enemies on the battlefield. We will expose their lies against us in the court of public opinion. Israel will continue to stand proud and unbowed. Isaiah a great prophet of peace, taught us nearly 3,000 years ago in Jerusalem to speak truth to power. Leman Zion lo echeshe, uleman Yerushalayim lo eshkot, ad yetze kanoga tzidka, vishuata kelapi divar. For the sake of Zion, I will not be silent. For the sake of Jerusalem, I will not be still. Until her justice shines bright and her salvation glows like a flaming torch. Ladies and gentlemen, let us light a torch of truth and justice to safeguard our common future. Thank you. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not 
brought the oil and the wine. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Almighty God can see Satan totally defeated and being punished in the lake of fire. The Lord Jesus Christ defeated Satan on the cross, and now we must each defeat Satan with the blood of the Lamb, the words of our testimony, and die in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is, to love the Lord Jesus Christ more than we love our own life. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke to each of us concerning these end-time events in the New Testament book of Luke. Heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, and drunkenness, and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. The instructions the Lord Jesus Christ gave us is that we should pray that we are able to stand before the Son of Man. My friend, no one is able to stand before the Son of Man unless he is washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are none righteous, no, not one. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Let us pray now together and ask Almighty God to forgive our sin and wash us in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just follow after me in prayer, but pray with your own faith and your own sincerity. Father God, that's right, just pray in faith after me. Father God, I ask you now to forgive all of my sin and wash me in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and make me holy unto you. Baptize me now in the Holy Spirit and give me more power to resist temptations. I acknowledge that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for my sin and is soon to return. I forgive all of those people that I have resented or hated and I receive from you the free gift of salvation. I dedicate my life and commit my spirit to you I ask you now to keep me strong in the time of testing and help me to stand before the Son of Man. I receive that as done. Amen. Thank you for praying with me, child of God.